Now who could forget the good old green dragons in the wilderness? I'll be slaying the green dragons in the Fornity dungeon since the wilderness sword does teleport you right there. Here are the variables, some royal armor, the crossbow, and a little food, and a single dose of super anti-fire. Let's go ahead and start. Go ahead and teleport with your wilderness sword and start slaying. Now with a little under 4 minutes, you can complete an entire trip. This includes a full pack yak. Now the vast majority of the money will come from the hides and bones, but you gotta remember one thing. Apart from the regular and the rare drop table, this is the wilderness, so you have access to the wilderness drop table, which can give you a lot of money on top of the regular drops, and you don't need to be on a slayer task to obtain them. Here are the two special drops I received, some bloodweed seeds and some range brawlers. With that said, let's check the loot. Now the cost of the anti-fire, the bolts, the pack yak and such, this all came down to a little under 50k and all the loot gave me 1.8 mil so obviously let's subtract it and you will receive 1.7 mil profit. Once you consider that this is in the wilderness, go ahead and judge 1.7 mil as you please. Now for a method as old as time, bow strings. Now as far as I remember, they've always been profit, but the question is just how much profit. So I bought 5k flax and spun them in Sears Village. Reason being is, if you wear at least the Sears Headband 2, you can spin them 33% faster, which makes it faster than Lumbridge. Not much to say now, so let's just see the results. Now within an hour, I ended up crafting 1.6k bowstrings. Now at first glance, as you can see here on screen, it's really not a whole lot of money. And even with the level 1 requirement, it's still not much money. So if you're starting a new account, this isn't really a bad idea to get some you know, starter cash. Now here we have another method that I yoinked from an old forum post. Although I'm not going to telegraph as the post mentions, I still feel like it's important to give credit where credit is due. Here are the variables. We're going to need a games necklace and a pack yak, making this very cheap. Although the polypore staff won't be used, I'm still going to take it just in case I get PK'd, which I don't in the process of the hour. To start, teleport to the Corp Cave and take the shortcut just north. You only need level 54 agility. Then head east. Now before we start picking up the berries, make sure your air loot is turned on in the settings and it's bound to a hotkey. Then between the white berries and loot. Believe it or not, the berries respawn in just 5 seconds, making hopping not feel justified. If you do hop, it might be faster, but we're talking about 1 or 2 seconds at most. Now for the kicker. Once full, head north and look for the cape seller to bank. Yes, he is really close by. Now obviously it'll depend on the server. If he's not there, go ahead and hop and find the world that he's in and then keep using that server as he will stay there for quite a while. Alternatively, you can run back into the Corp Cave and teleport out. It really doesn't add that much amount of time. In this run, I use a mix of both methods with what feels like a 3 to 2 ratio, slightly more using the Cape Seller to bank. Now with half an hour done, let's go ahead and check the results. I gathered 444 berries and they sold for 2.6 mil. That's just half an hour or 5.2 mil for an entire hour at almost no cost. Now let me put this into perspective. All you need is 54 agility and a games necklace. Any beast of burden familiar of course will help. 
This is definitely how I would try to make my first few meals if I had to start fresh. Now who can forget the warped tortoise for the discount yak? Not much I can say about them, but I do remember the shells being pretty pricey. Hopefully they still are. So let's go ahead and slay them for 30 minutes. But first, I must hop as someone's actually slaying them. So I finished up the 30 minutes of slaying and now let's go ahead and check the loot. But first, you might have gotten some perfect shells and we could actually trade each shell in for 600 GP with 500 crafting experience per shell. You can speak to Barlock, not sure how to pronounce that one, in Dorgishkan. And the grand total sold for just one mil. Kind of disappointing to be honest. Now for something plain and simple, sharks. Here are the variables. This includes the full shark outfit and a supreme call of disease aura, which is the 10% catch aura. And of course, the skull cape for an extra catch. Let's head north here at the fishing guild and see what we could catch within an hour. And here are the results. Not as plentiful as I'd like to be honest. They're valued at 754k. Let's see if we could even sell them for that much. And we got 680. And to be honest, with the availability of gathering sharks in the places such as the Borderot, the God Wars Dungeon 2, believe it or not, and the Garage of Horde Stalker Dungeon, I'm not too surprised at the current prices of sharks. After all, they aren't the, you know, premier food as they used to anymore. <laughs> 